In this lecture, we are going to learn about arrays in JavaScript, what it is and how to create and use it. Basically, an array is used to store an ordered collection of data and those data can be accessed by using its index. So in JavaScript, an array is used to create a collection or a list. It can be used to create a collection of simple types like string or number or it can also be used to create a collection of complex types like an object. And also remember that array is a special type of object in JavaScript, which has its own methods and properties. So in one of the lectures, we learned that any value which does not belong to seven primitive types is an object in JavaScript. So an array, it does not belong to any seven primitive types, which we have talked about. And that's why an array is an object in JavaScript. Now, the next question is, what is the use of an array? Let's try to understand it with an example. Let's say I want to store the details of a student. For that, I'm creating a variable. I will call it student. Okay, now in this student variable, I want to store the detail of a student. But when we create a variable, we can only store a single value in it. So either I can go ahead and store a name in this variable like John, or if I want, I can go ahead and I can store the age of that student in this variable or maybe the gender of that student let's say male so at a time I can only store a single value in this student variable I cannot assign multiple values at a time to this student variable but here I want to save detail of a student so I want to store multiple value in this student variable how can I do that for that, what we can do is we can create a collection. We can create a list and in that list, we will have all the details of the student. For example, in that list, we will store the name of the student, the age of the student, gender of the student, city and country. OK, so to create that collection, we use an array and to create an array, we have two different ways. We can use new array syntax. Now we will talk about this new array syntax in great detail in a bit, but we can also create an array by using square bracket notation. So here to this student, if I assign a square bracket like this here, using this opening and closing square bracket, we are creating an array and behind the scenes, it is again going to use new array syntax. Okay. So basically an empty array will be assigned to this student variable. So if I go ahead and if I log, this student variable and if I save the changes you will see that an empty array has been logged now in this array we can store a list of data for example in this array I'm going to store the name of the student let's say John I'm going to store the age of the student let's say 28 gender of the student male then I'll also store the area pin code of that student where he's staying for example one two three four five six and I'm also going to store the information of if the student has passed or failed. So if the student has passed, we will store true. But if the student has failed, we will store false. So here you see in this array, we are storing multiple data, right? And using this array, we are basically creating a list. We are creating a collection. In this collection, we have multiple items and that we are assigning to this student variable so now when we are logging the student variable if i save the changes you will see that an array has been logged basically this opening and closing square bracket it means it is an array and in that array we are storing five data the name age gender area pin code and whether the student has passed or not so that information we are storing inside this array and if you notice in an array we can store a value of any data type here in this array, we are storing a data of string type, number type, and we are also storing a data of Boolean type. We can also store null or undefined in this array. So in JavaScript, it is possible to create an array which can store a data of any data type. In many other programming languages, when you create an array, that array can store a data of a single data type. For example, it can store data of only string type or data of only number type. But in JavaScript, an array can store a data of any type. You can even store an object inside an array. So to create an object, we use a set of curly braces like this. In there, I can specify properties, for example, name, maybe mark, 
and let's say age maybe 30 so this is just for demonstration so as you can see in this array i can also store an object if i save the changes now this array now has six elements so these are the five elements and the sixth element is this object so we can store a data of any data type in an array now let me go ahead and let me remove this object so this is how we create an array using either square brackets or by using new array syntax now we will talk about new array syntax in a bit once we have created this array we might want to access the data from that array for that we can use the index of the array so remember that each element each item which we have in this collection in this array it will have an index and index starts from zero so the first item will be at index zero the second item will be at index one the third item will be at index two and so on so if you want to access or manipulate the data of an array you need to access it using its index for example let's say we want to access the first element of the student array so for that what we need to do is we need to first use the array name which is student in this case then we need to use a set of square brackets like this and then we specify the index of the element which we want to access here i want to access the first element of the student array and the index for the first element will be zero so here i'll pass zero within the square brackets and this expression here it is going to return me the first element from the student array that means here it is going to return me this element let's go ahead and let's store it in a variable let's call it value you can call it anything and let me go ahead and let me log that value so i'll log it after this line okay so first we are logging the student array itself and then we are going to log the element which is present at the first index of the student array so if i save the changes you will see that first the array has been logged and then it is logging the first element of the student array if i want to get the third element of the student array this is the third element in the student array if i want to get it the index for this third element will be 2 because index starts from 0 so for the third element i can specify the index as 2 if i save the changes you will see that the third element it has been logged here so in this way we can access the elements of an array using its index and if we want to manipulate the element of the array again we will access it using its index and then we can assign a new value to it for example let's say i want to access this area pin code and i want to change it from 1 2 3 4 5 6 2 1 4 5 6 7 something like that so to do that to change this value first i will have to access it and to access it again we will use the array name which is student followed by square brackets and in the square brackets we will specify the index of the element which we want to access here we want to access this element so this is the fourth element in the student array and for the fourth element the index will be three right because index starts from zero so for the fourth element the index will be three we will specify the index here this expression here it will return us the fourth element from the student array it is going to return us this element and now here we are going to change the value of that element so here we will say equal to and then we will assign a new value let's say four five six seven eight nine now if i save the changes you will see that after assigning a new value when we are logging the student array there the value has changed to four five six seven eight nine initially it was one two three four five six but now it has changed to four five six seven eight nine so here we are accessing the array element and here we are manipulating array element and when i say element that means the item of the array so all the items of an array is called as elements so these are the elements of this array the students array also one basic thing i want to mention here is if you want to log the elements of an array for example if you want to log the third element of the array we know that we can access it using its index which will be two so you can write console.log statement inside that you will specify the array whose element you want to access after that you will use a set of square brackets like this and there you will specify the index of the element which you want to access for example here i'll specify two so here it is going to log 
the third element from the student array. So if I save the changes, it has logged the third element from the student array. So when we specify the index at that time, an element of this array will be logged. But if I don't specify any index, in that case, the complete array will be logged. So this I just wanted to mention here because it can be quite helpful when you're debugging your JavaScript code. Another very important point which you need to remember about JavaScript arrays is that the JavaScript arrays are dynamic in size. So you need not to specify a fixed size when you are creating the array. For example, in this array, I can add n number of elements. I can add as many elements as I want. But in many other programming language, when you create an array, you need to specify the size of that array initially. And when I say size of the array, that means how many elements that array will have. You cannot have more element than the size in that array. But that is not the case in JavaScript. In JavaScript, arrays are of dynamic length. You can add as many elements as you want. All right, so this is how we create an array using square bracket notation. And this is how we can access it and we can manipulate it. And we learned that we can also create an array using this new array syntax. And remember that when we use square brackets behind the scenes, it is also using this new array syntax only to create the array. So let's also learn how we can create an array using new array syntax. For that, again, let's create a variable. Let's call it maybe user. And to this, I want to assign an array. For that, I can use this new array syntax. I can also use the square bracket notation, which we learned before. So we can use square brackets and inside that we can specify the elements so in that way also we can create and the square bracket syntax is the way which the developers mostly use but it is also good to know how this new array syntax works right so when we use this new array syntax here we are creating an empty array if i go ahead and if i log user you will see that an empty array has been logged now if you want to add elements to this array we can specify it here. For example, let's say user is admin. He has read write permission. And let's say he belongs to IT department. Okay, so I'm just creating a dummy array here. So these values will be the element of the array which we are creating using this new array syntax. So now if I save the changes and when we are logging this user array, you will see that that array has those three elements. Now, in order to access elements of this array, which we have created using new array syntax, again, we will have to use index of the element. So again, this first element will be at index zero, the second element will be at index one, and this third element will be at index two. So if I want to access the elements here, I will have to use the array name, which is user, followed by the index number. So let's say I want to access the second element, for that index will be one, right? And I can simply go ahead and I can log it in the console like this. So this expression here, it is going to return us the second element from the user array, which will be this value read write. And we are going to log that value. So if I save the changes, you see read write has been logged here. So this is how we can access a value. Now, if I want to manipulate any element value, for example, from read write, let's say I want to change the access to read only. So for that, first I will have to access this second element. For that, we can use this array name, which is user. We can specify the index of that element, which is one, because that element is the second element in the array. So its index will be one. And then I can change its value. So from read write, I'm going to change its value to read only. Okay. And after that, let's go ahead and let's log this user object. So I'll cut it from here and let me log it after we have changed the value of the second element. So now if I save the changes, you will see in the array, the second element is read only. So from read write, the value has changed to read only. So in this way, we can access an array element and we can manipulate its value. Now there is one bug with this new array syntax, which you need to know about. So for example, let's say we are creating an array Let's call it numbers. You can name it anything. And we are going to create this array using new array syntax. So here, let's say this numbers array, it is going to be an array of numbers. Let's pass 10, 20, and 30. Let me go ahead and let me log this numbers. 
So if I save the changes, you will see that that array has been logged. So it is working as expected. Now the problem is when you only pass a single numeric value. In this case, this 10 will not be considered as an array element. Instead, it will be considered as the size of the array. So in this case, what JavaScript will do is it will create an array without any element but with a length of 10. So if I save the changes, you will see we have an empty array and its size you can see as 10. So length you see it is 10. But this array does not have any element. So when we specify a single number, the single number is considered as the size of the array. So JavaScript thinks that here we are specifying what will be the size of this array which we are creating using this new array syntax. But if we specify multiple numeric values, for example, if I specify 10 and 20, in that case, this new array syntax, it is going to create an array with these two numeric values. If I save the changes, it has created an array with those two numeric values. So this you need to understand because if you are going to use this new array syntax, which you are not going to do very often, but if you are using it, you need to be aware about this bug. All right, so in this lecture, we learned what is an array, how to create an array, how to access the elements of an array, and how to manipulate the elements of an array. Now, as I have mentioned earlier, an array is also an object in JavaScript. That means an array is going to have some methods and properties. So in the next lecture, we are going to talk about some of the commonly used methods and properties of an array. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.